continuing fall's dyslexia season now with dyslexic criminals. Sitting here, thinking our time's gone by. Oh, how I want to break down and cry. But I can't, I need to keep my cool. Or the wires in here will call me a fool. Still sitting in this lonely place. Still trying to keep the place. I know one day the door will open. For that day, I am hoping. Polmont Young Offenders Institute near Edinburgh houses over 400 teenagers from all over Scotland. Many of them started offending while playing truant from primary school. By the time they came to Palmont, they were seasoned criminals. Currently serving a two-year sentence for assault and robbery. For death by dangerous driving. For a house breaking and drugs. For serious assault. Premier disfigurement and severe injury. Car theft. Car theft. Car theft. Misuse of drugs act. Assault and robbery on a shot. For assault. For being a bad boy. <laughs> Now some of Polmont's inmates have agreed to take part in a unique study. It's to be conducted by two leading dyslexia specialists from Edinburgh University. Okay, the gate's open, so if you like, come down. Jane Kirk and Gavin Reed believe that undiagnosed dyslexia may be a significant factor in leading to juvenile delinquency. There is a body of evidence which suggests that dyslexia is fairly prevalent in young offenders, but there's some people who refute that and say it's no more prevalent in the prison population than it is elsewhere. To settle the dispute, Jane and Gavin are going to test a random sample of 50 of Polmont's inmates. Using state-of-the-art computer software, they can diagnose dyslexia with a straightforward 15-minute test. What are you expecting to find today? I would think about eight. And that's, that's quite a lot. Eight out of 50 would be quite a high percentage. I think it would be more than that. I think 14, 15. This test has never been done in a prison before. Prisoners are locked up in their cells or kept working all day. <laughs> Cleaning is one of the vocational training classes on offer. An attraction of the class is being allowed to graffiti on the walls. The downside is having to scrub it off with industrial cleaner. Before the computer screening, the prisoners were asked a simple question. No. No. Yes. No, never. No. No, no I have not, no. No, never. No. No. I uh -huh. My reading's all right, but my writing's... a four-year-old. It's not very good. No, never. No. 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 I suppose that's the only problem I've really got is my writing is bad. I don't know if that's because of dyslexia. Mikey spends his time in Polmont's textile workshop making donkey jackets. His first arrest for vandalism was at the age of eight. A social worker was appointed to help him cope with problems at home and school. He hated primary school and was unruly in class. I remember kicking and screaming and holding on to the desk when I tried to pull his out. That's about the first, the furthest back I can remember. It was about primary five. It's for no working, no wanting to work. Uh, it's acting an idiot, basically. Despite his problems, Mikey was never diagnosed as dyslexic and things went from bad to worse. I just sit there and do nothing. It would just start an argument, just get sent home. Sh stupid now, but that's who I was back then. Mikey felt humiliated inside the classroom. 
but in the playground, the tables were turned. I was a bully, but so were they. They looked down the knees when I couldn't do a, a stupid wee sum. I'd get the odd wee remark. It was different when it came to playtime when I was smashing them and jumping on their head. They weren't so cheeky then, you know what I mean? So in a way, they both are sort of blame. I'm most really sorry for what I'd done. I think they deserved it, every one of them. And if they wanted to do it again, I'd do it again. If they wanted to look at me that way, like that, just, just the same as anybody else. 15 years old and still at school, Mikey was arrested for robbing a garage and sent to Polmont. His 18-month sentence is up in just three weeks. Nice to see you, Thomas. Thomas is serving 21 months in Polmont for four house burglaries. He chooses to go to prison education classes, but spends most of the time there arguing with Margaret Haddo, who teaches classes in self-employment. You are very close to getting bumped off the course because we've got no ideas, we've got no way forward. I've got two boys that are well in Margaret, front. Margaret, right, I've got listen, ideas. me and Chad will have everything done by the next time we meet, right? <laughs> Which is Monday. Right, by Monday. Right. At primary school, nine-year-old Thomas spent playtime mugging other children to buy drugs and drink. Five primary schools asked him to leave. Thomas says he was never tested for dyslexia. No secondary school would take him, and by the age of 12, he was shut up in a secure educational unit. Okay. Most of the time I was cutting myself off for learning anyway because I didn't want to learn, if you, know, if you know what I mean. It's just, I don't know, sometimes, you know, I can hardly remember anything from my school. Because, I don't know, <laughs> it's bad times, man. Before starting the computer screening, Gavin and Jane are going to observe the inmates in the prison's joinery workshop. The offenders are making bird tables for sale outside. It's an ideal opportunity to see how they use tools and remember instructions. Problems with reading and writing are obvious clues to dyslexia, but so are clumsiness, poor concentration, and lack of coordination. Have you seen Thomas? Yes, he's yes. definitely dyslexic. Definitely. <laughs> the, the, the thing about him was, um, you can see he, he's, he's right-handed, right to the right uh, hand, but he was sweeping I, I with his left so hand. Watching yes. His sweeping, and actually even his gait. Yes, that's right, really yeah. Off. Now, I started to talk to him about it, and he's asked a lot of good questions. I think he's very bright. Yeah. I've got four there. One, two, three, four that I think, you know, could have possibilities. I mean, I, I could see people who are definitely not, and I've excluded them. I know they're definitely not, because they're too well coordinated. But I've got one, two, three, four possibilities. The suggestion that there could be a higher rate of dyslexia inside prison than in the outside world meets with open scepticism from the head of education at Polmont, Les Wiley. I don't think you'll link directly dyslexia with, with major criminality uh, statistics. I would hope the screen would show it's just normal of what's outside, to be perfectly honest. If you, if you were to pick 50 people from society in general uh, and screen 50 people, I would hope to to see parallel results, to be perfectly honest. If Les Wiley is right, the computer screening will pick up between two and five dyslexics from the random sample of 50. It's time for the computer screening to begin. The offenders are tested in groups of six. The highly sensitive computers have been programmed to tell the difference between someone with poor reading skills and a genuine dyslexic. The computer test comprises a hundred simple questions and takes just 15 minutes to complete. Jane is watching for behavioural clues. He's using the arrow as a, a prompt. Harry is serving nine months for handling stolen goods. He mouths the words as he reads, a classic sign of dyslexia. Do you write with your left or right hand? 
James, a burglar on a two-year sentence, must read the questions out loud to understand them. That's another sign of dyslexia. In the past, teachers have told him he's not dyslexic, just stupid. Do you often try to find people you can enjoy talking with? Yeah. The first group has completed the screening. More than half have tested positive, a remarkable result which confirms Gavin and Jane's theory about high rates of dyslexia inside prison. That's three, it's for three. <laughs> <laughs> really yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Another group are ready to take the test. We're off for the wing. Thomas is struggling. We suspected all along he was dyslexic. He's taking a long, long time to process both the reading and the thought processes. And he's well behind everyone else in the room, but fiercely independent, wants to do it himself. And you know, that, that's, a, that's another indication of a dyslexic person. He doesn't need help, but he just processes very, very slowly. The screening indicates Thomas is also dyslexic. By the end of the first day, the results are more dramatic than anyone had predicted. The, the five this afternoon, three were significantly dyslexic, not just borderline. So that's the next, another three. So what's the total so far? The total so far is... <laughs> Nineteen. 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 So if we don't get any more, that's 38 per cent. In the normal population, the rate is between five and ten per cent. Stage two of the Polmont study is an in-depth educational assessment with some of the prisoners who have tested positive for dyslexia. First, Gavin assesses Thomas. I'd like to do just a few minutes of spelling, which won't take any more than a few minutes, okay. Museum, museum. Oh, yeah, I put it out. Do you want to try? Oh. What does it start with? An M-U. Mm-hmm. Well, just uh, Put on MU and see if you could finish it. It's a difficult one, Thomas, so don't worry. Next, Gavin asks a series of questions designed to evaluate Thomas's comprehension. Good. Right, let's try the next one. What is the thing to do if you find an envelope in the street that is sealed and addressed and it's got a stamp in it which hasn't been used? Open it. Okay. And what else? Anything else you read it? I'm going to say some words to you. I want you to tell me what these words mean, OK? Do you know what compassion means? Compassion. To love. Yes. OK. Then it's building blocks to test his visual spatial skills. <laughs> I don't like the explanation, that pay man. This is how psychiatrist do. Here it is. Despite his reluctance, Thomas can find the patterns in the blocks very easily. Dyslexics often have strong visual skills and a talent for solving problems. Right, okay, that's excellent, Thomas. Looking at some of your spelling errors, the kind of errors that you're making, they are very characteristic of dyslexia. Take the word museum. You put a Z, but it should be an S. So that, those kind of things, you're just spelling it really as it sounds. Most interesting, because I saw you doing you something. Blocks. The blocks. You did the blocks really well. You scored in that block design probably about the top 25% of the population for your age. No, you really scored right up there. The assessment confirms that Thomas is dyslexic and failed to achieve his full potential at school. Now the reasons why you're blowing it all sky high. Mark's a talented musician, but he too failed at school. 
I couldn't like, do the written assignments and that. I, and I just gave up. Man. Mark served seven sentences for drug-related assaults, fighting and theft. Now he's in Polmont for armed robbery. He's just been told he's dyslexic. I think I, I, someone inside me knew that there was something no right, you know what I mean? And I, I didn't really want to like, find out. I didn't really want to believe it, you know what I mean? Because it kind of makes you feel embarrassed. And, and I think, uh, to me anyway, it makes me feel a wee bit embarrassed not knowing that. Could be dyslexic, you know? Mikey tested positive in the computer screening. In front of his mates, he pretends not to care. Now it's time for him to see Gavin for an in-depth assessment. Observed by head of education okay, Les so Wiley. What is the capital of Italy? Greece. Try next one. Um, who was Louis Armstrong? Do you know the guy that went up in the space rocket? Was that Neil Armstrong? Aye, uh, it was. Don't know who Neil Armstrong is. Yes. Dyslexics often struggle to put simple information in the right order. Five nine one seven four two eight. Five nine one. You've lost me. Yeah, that was uh, quite a, a length of digits there. Next vocabulary. Assemble, assemble. Like putting things together. Okay. Sentence, sentence. What I'm doing now. Any other meaning of sentence? Uh, like a story, like a line in a story. Yes, sir, absolutely. Well done. Mikey's had lots of educational support, but this is the first time dyslexia has been identified. He's upset it wasn't diagnosed earlier. I feel cheated. See it a few years of my life. See it at school. Uh -huh. I think that's fair. So I went through but, hell at school, you know what I mean? Can I just say something which I think is very important? And that is that you've got to really look upon dyslexia from now on as a positive thing, in other words, a good thing. You've got to try to say, right, OK, how could I move on from here? All I can think about is when I was at school and I couldn't do as good as I'd right. done. And, well, you're quite and like they, they never done a wee thing, like something, mm -hmm. just a wee thing on a computer like that, and it tells them dyslexic. And well, they couldn't even do that at school for me. The last inmates to be tested are told their results. Some of the questions were a bit nippy. I kept asking a couple of questions over and over again, like about handwriting, what ball you kick a foot with, eh, what foot you kick a ball with. It says that you are dyslexic, that you process the information in, in a different way. Did you? Did you? The question was easy enough, and it was like, pretty relaxed as well. I enjoyed doing it. And we well, got diagnosed with dyslexia and all that as well again. Ryan, sentenced for armed robbery, is bitter when he's told the news. You know, I feel that it it really explains some of your some difficulties. Because well, if that's the case, why 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 wasn't this fixed before now? Given the opportunity yeah, to do something about it, not I mean it's it's a shambles and it shows you the society we're often in, doesn't it? That's not right at all. It's very true. The study is complete. All the volunteers have been tested, and the final results are in. 25 out of 50, that's half our random sample, have been diagnosed as dyslexic. It's an extraordinary result. Far higher than I ever expected. I mean, I, I, I said probably 14 out of 50. I said about eight. So, in fact, they're staggering, really. Hi guys, uh, my name is Murdo. I'm one to take a group picture of the lot to you, okay? And I the 50 Polmont volunteers gather for a commemorative photograph. The study there. suggests that undiagnosed dyslexia is linked to juvenile delinquency. 
I'll get somebody to kneel at the front and six of you to stand at the back. So we'll just follow me. Figures show that 82% of Polmont's inmates were truants, 83 were suspended from school, and more than half were expelled. A lot of these boys have been almost written off as failures at school. So they wind up the teacher, they um, wind up their peer group, and then they're excluded from school, and, and then they're on the, the, the slippery slope into either truanting or being criminals. Right, guys, can you, can you break it up a wee bit? Just one of you come forward. In 1998, the Metropolitan Police found that truants committed a third of all burglaries and car thefts, and almost 40% of all muggings. Oh, it's a cycle. If you start feeling when you're six or seven, is there any chance when you're 14? By that time, you'll have failed many, many times over. If their dyslexia had been diagnosed in primary school, perhaps some of these young offenders would not be in Polmont today. I want to make sure you understand what happened. People who are dyslexic are not thick. One of the reasons for the screening programme was to identify if there's a need to help people who are dyslexic, OK? Is there a need in Pullman young offenders? Now, we'll look at the results of the screening and other people will decide, is there a need? But I will be in touch with you all. Thanks a million for taking part. Polmont are reviewing their educational practice, but for some of the inmates, it's probably too late. Thomas is pessimistic about his future. I mean, sometimes I lie, lie in my bed and think all my things. I'm going, to, I'm going to get a job and I'm going to settle down like that, no? And it's the end. My, my head just cuts back off and they're like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I'm going for a bag of smack. Mikey is thinking hard about his future. It's six o'clock in the morning, and he's about to leave Polmont. Now he knows he's dyslexic rather than stupid. He's thinking about applying for college. Your mum is waiting to pick you up. She's sitting out there. Okay, I'm going to have to probably get help on some things. There's no point trying to hide it. It's been a big shock. It's been a shock to everybody. Polmont is just one of Britain's 19 young offenders' institutions. The results have major implications for both the prison and education systems. Jane and Gavin have sent a full report of their findings to the Home Secretary. Thor's dyslexia season continues tomorrow and across the week starting at 7.55 after the Channel 4 News.